just about everyone in this room has a magnetometer in their pocket right now. If Google Maps can tell you which way is north, you've operated a magnetometer. From fridge magnets to MRIs, generating and measuring magnetic fields has been an important part of human life ever since lodestones and compass needles guided our ancestors around the globe. In today's physics experiments, we're pushing the frontiers of precision measurements, and we require magnetometers so precise they could measure the magnetic field coming from the thoughts in your head. My thesis work is using lasers to measure magnets, and if those aren't the two coolest things in physics, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> now, the basis for any measurement device is something that is both consistent and well-known, like a predefined length of wood you call a meter stick. The system our device uses is well known to physics, a single atom with a single electron orbiting it. Well, we actually have a whole cloud of atoms, and they only look like they have one electron each, but it's close enough, even for the math that we're doing. Now, when a beam of light shines on you, the most you might feel is a little warm, but atoms are so small, we can easily manipulate them just by shining light on them, transporting them, trapping them, even changing their properties, changing how the electron orbits around them. It turns out that if we use just the right kind of light and we pump a whole bunch of it into this atomic vapor that we have, we can jiggle the atoms until their electrons start spinning around like little tops. And like the commutator in an electric motor, and for many of the same reasons, this spinning current, essentially, will want to align itself with the magnetic field that it's in. And what we end up with is a whole cloud of little compass needles, all pointing in the direction of our magnetic field. And because of the way magnetic fields and currents interact, the rate at which they spin is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field. So while we can't look at magnetic fields, the information that we want about the strength of the magnetic field, we've encoded that in the atoms that we have, and atoms we can look at. So just like we can manipulate atoms using light, we can manipulate light using atoms. So by passing a much weaker laser beam through the same collection of atoms, we call it a probe, we allow the atoms to change the properties of the light. And by measuring this change very carefully, we have a sensitive measure of the strength of the magnetic field. And this effect is sensitive enough to measure fields down to 10 femtotesla, 100 trillion times smaller than a typical MRI field. Now, right now we're developing this technology to answer fundamental questions about the universe, like why is there more matter than antimatter out there? But imagine flying in a plane 5,000 feet above the ground and still being able to search for ore with a metal detector. Imagine an MRI that uses ultra-sensitive magnetometers, eliminating the need for huge and expensive superconducting magnets. The future is looking magnetic. Thanks.